So we can see this very clearly if we're talking about other species, but we're not very good at seeing it in ourselves. And that's why I emphasize that research in primal screams, because I hope it gives us an end run around this static discussion about fatherlessness and et cetera, that so many people find hard to engage in. Why do they find it so hard to engage in? Because, you know, you talk about uh, having other people in your family to teach you stuff. That certainly resonates with my experience. You know, I learned more about being a man from my grandfather than I did from my father, I would say. Uh, it, it, and me. <laughs> from you, yeah, I, yeah, learned a lot. Um, anyway, uh, so the, I, I totally get that. And it's not a political statement to me to say that children need parents and they need grandparents and they need family members to be around to, and you learn different f things from different people. And, you know, grandparents are important not only because they're just another person, but they're from a different generation. They, they've had their children, maybe the, the aspirations for their children have relaxed a little bit. Now they can just be playful with the grandchildren. Like all of that is important. And none of that seems in any way controversial to me. And I'm a sort of like non-religious, uh, you know, sort of liberal guy living in a big city in Western, in Western Europe. Why can't we, why, why you say that we can't talk about this for obvious reasons? Why has the debate become as ossified as you say? Well, sometimes I think it's because uh, we are in the position of, say, white people in the American South pre-Civil War. That is to say, Everybody is affected by this institution of slavery in that time. Or I, nowadays, I would say everybody's affected by the sexual revolution. Everybody's implicated, um, and people know that there's something wrong. On the other hand, they don't want to go around hurting everybody's feelings. And that's what this reluctance is about. It's about not wanting to hurt, as you said, Francis, the single mom, right? Single moms are doing heroic stuff. They're doing the work of two people. So nobody wants to hurt their feelings. But at some point, someone has to ask what the cumulative effect of this is on kids. So in the United States, for example, I just read the umpteenth story about the fentanyl explosion. And before that, there was, of course, the heroin explosion. And before that, the opioid explosion simultaneously, psychiatric diagnoses of depression and anxiety have been rising. I've been chronicling this for 20 years. This was happening long before COVID. The picture I'm painting here is one of um, widespread, pretty serious psychological dissolution. And I don't think that's a picture that professionals would quibble over because they know that it's true. Again, we have to push through some of that resistance in the interests of the people who are most affected by this, uh, which I think uh, amounts to younger people. When we saw those protesters in the streets, you know, wrecking things and um, being su supremely emotional, um, I was seeing something on their faces, which was real misery and real suffering. I think conservatives, and I include myself in this, make a mistake when we dismiss these bizarre actings out as snowflakeism or something that is the product of an overly privileged childhood, that's not what I see in this. I see real suffering. And the problem is they've come up with the wrong names for this thing. The problem out there is not some abstraction like heteronormativity, right? I think that's right anyway. Um, <laughs> the problem is not uh feminism even the problem is much more primal than that it's that a lot of people um are psychologically um unhinged by the fact that they have not been able to attach to family community i would argue religion is part of that although i agree that um there are substitute forms of what Joseph Bottom called bastard Christianity is floating around. I mean, we see this in climate change. We see this in other things too. Um, generally, the woke religion. Uh, so there we have it. And, you know, it's 
it's a very, very depressing, but in my opinion, accurate analysis of, of, of what is happening. I guess, you know, the, the question that I really want to ask, Mary, is how, you know, how do we row back from this now? Because we've got to this point. It feels to me like a crisis point. What can we actually do as a society to row back from it? Is it, you know, good old fashioned take responsibility and in, in, in this era that we live in now, is that realistic? It's always realistic. I am hopeful for a couple of reasons. One is that revivals, religious and otherwise, have a way of you know popping up just when you least expect to see them. And I agree with you, Francis, that we have hit a kind of rock bottom, especially with the problems among the young and the suffering among the young. And I think out of that will come new leaders and new conversations because human beings are not meant to live as miserably as many of us do. Um, so there's that. Uh, there's always hope uh, because of that kind of, again, religious or other evangelization. I would point out something interesting about religion here, which is being in Washington, D.C., which is a, you know has a vibrant Catholic community, I'm very aware of sort of what goes on in it. Most of the young people, people in their 20s and 30s who are entering the Catholic Church uh, are entering it because they have been victims of this stuff one way or another. And they enter the church and embrace its theology because they hope to find something more congruent with the complicated human beings that they are. You know, they're looking for something that isn't some two-dimensional woke religion. They're looking for something um, that corresponds to the depth that they feel in themselves. So that's kind of interesting. In other words, it's not the old, the fuddy-duddies who have been, you know, raised, homeschooled, etc., cetera, uh, who are becoming the new backbone of Christianity in America. It's the people who are the walking wounded. And I think that's going to be an influential fact for a long time to come.